either it's a, a yes, I have, and it'll be tick, tick off, yes, I have. I've got a current one of these, which still lasts for five years. They, that couldn't be extended. The reason being, this is federal police stuff. They're doing the checks, not the institute. And their act, the Justice Act, said it lasts for five years, but no longer. So you've got to get a new one of those. It'll be up to date with it. So we'll tick off, yes, we've met that, yes, we've met that, yes, I've got a current one of those. And we will then be rolled into the annual. So every year, September, we'll be asked to pay. Every year, we'll be asked if we've met the renewal requirements of one year. <coughs> it will be easier to remember because it'll be one date every year that we're asked that instead of all of these different dates. If the database shows that your criminal history record is out of date, will they see the form telling you or the other time you need to renew? Yes, thank you. So sometime this year, you will get a letter saying you need to have a new one of these because <coughs> you're not going to be covered by it. Uh, by it. Oh, so yeah. Some of you last year, yeah, yeah. Four years. Oh, nice. and it still lasts for five years, so you're fine. If you didn't receive a card last year, that meant something was amiss, either your date, your out of date or something, or it was going to fall in this period. So say your criminal check was due in August. Yeah. Say it was due now. What's the date? August the 9th. It was due August the 9th, 2012. That meant you would not be covered for the complete year by a criminal check, a working with children check. So if that's the case, the Institute would not have sent you a card until you had to complete that form and got that up to date. Even though it's only just due now. So that's been the sort of anomaly around then. You would have paid for it back then if you would have been invoiced for it. You would have been sent a letter about it saying you need to do this. So how long did you send a Five years. Yes. And that is on your card, but on your card, yes, you have, yeah, you've got that on the other side to the date, small font. That's when you had the last one done. Well, four years from, five years from then, so four years from then. Just a question, and the working with children's sheets, are they one and the same thing? Yeah. Do they only come into this one thing? They are one. They are one. So the just the Justice Act mm -hmm. organises the working with children. Yes. And when you have one of these done through the institute, that covers you for the working with children yeah. through the Justice yeah, Act. Yeah. Yeah. When I was working with child care, I had to work with children. My teacher registration. They, yes, that's right. Some organisations no, don't no, organise no, it. I mean, I can see it here. Yeah, yeah. They wouldn't accept that. No, 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 some organisations don't. But it is federal law, isn't it? Yeah. It does cover. Yeah. So, either, either here you're saying yes, and then you're fine, or you're saying no here. It might, it might be one part of this. It might be I haven't done enough teaching days or I haven't got my PD up, which won't happen for this group. But one of those components, you, you, you say, well, I haven't met that requirement. If that's the case, if you're going no, there are some options here. You can let your registration expire. If you've got four years qualifications, because you can pick up your registration again and apply for it again. But if you've got less than that, don't let it expire because you will not get back in as a fully registered teacher. Fully registered teachers have to have four years now. But if you're in the system, it's two or three years, so be it. If you've got four years, you, you can let it you can let it expire and pick 
up and apply again. We can't teach a course with no registration, but um, the other option here is something called non-practicing registration. And it's a really good one to know about um, because it means, it's a bit like parking your car in the garage. It's registered, you're gonna park it, you're not gonna drive it for a while, it's just gonna sit there waiting for you to come and drive it again. Paid your fees, you're up to date with everything, but it's just sitting there waiting for you. When you're ready to come back into the workforce, and this is great for teachers on family leave or carers or, or people on holiday, extended holidays or whatever it is, who don't think they're going to be teaching for a, a while, that you, you can opt for the non practicing. Leave your car in the driveway. When I'm ready to go and drive it again, when I'm ready to teach again, I'm going to return to an active registration. So you tell the, the institute, reactivate my registration, it's sitting dormant, and I'm going to teach. So does it cost you to the non practicing registration? No. Oh, it used to go to pay your annual fees. Right. Yeah. right. There used to be a waiver on it for the way this would be taken out to show you. No, you don't. No. And there is no fixed limit on that non practicing. If you chose it here and said, I'm going non practicing, you don't have to say to the institute, I want that for five years, or one year, or one month, or three months. You would just say, I want to go for a non practicing registration. That is where I'm sitting at the minute. When my circumstances change and I want to work, then I will return. And when you tell the institute you're going to do that, so if you rang the institute or put a form in today, 14, oh, what is it? No, oh God, what's happening? No, sorry. <laughs> Ninth, get the time in. Ninth of the eighth. If you told us today you wanted to return from that, you'd have one year and an extension until the next September to meet those requirements of one year, one year. yeah, one year requirements. Yeah. 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 Oh no, to be practicing. So, say, yeah, if you went to non practicing at renewal, because that's the time you, you opt for it, you can have that for as long as you like at the moment. Yeah. Then, when you choose, to return from that, it's called returning from non-practicing, logically. <laughs> and that's the form you fill out, returning from non-practicing registration. From the time you really lodge that with us, you have one year, which is what the policy says, but it will be taking you up to the next September. It will give you that extension to that. To me, the thing, one year. It'll be those requirements. Which these might change. This might change to 20 days because of the national changes that we're experiencing. So, if all states and territories have consistency with their registration, which we're trying to get, then it looks like that will move to 20 days. Is there any recognition of the fact that the CRTs can generally work? or are able to work less days as a full-time teacher. So why do we have to do the same amount of PD program? I'm not, I don't have a problem with it from a professional point of view, but access to the PD that you can afford is extremely hard. Oh, no, I agree. I know where you're coming from, but from the institute's point of view, that you're not second-class teachers, that everyone's registered at the same level. But on that point, PD can be just clarified all how much of it has to be face to face and how much of it has to be personal reading and reflection time? Question. In the old policy, it did talk about 50% or more of that to be um, research, research based, sort of sourced from outside the immediate work environment. But that phrase actually caused a lot of consternation in the teaching profession.